Uh, hello, son. Sorry, we were dawdling. Francis is in the car, swathed in chiffon. Oh, Francis now. No more auntie. It started to feel a little silly. Does she approve? Haven't asked. Oh. Are we ready? We are. This is nice. <laughs> What are your politics? Well, I'm afraid I really have none. I am a liberal unionist. Ah, they count as Tories. They dine with us or come in the evenings at any rate. <laughs> now, to my parents. Are your parents living? I have lost both my parents. Oh, to lose one parent, Mr. Worthing, may be regarded as a misfortune. To lose both looks like carelessness. <laughs> Evening, sir, I hope you... Where did this charitable gentleman who had a first-class ticket to the seaside resort find you? In a handbag. A handbag? Yes, Lady Bracknell, I was in a handbag. A somewhat large black leather handbag. It's great. Thank you very much for your... Thank you. To be poor, or at any rate bred, in a handbag, whether it had handles or not, seems to me to display a contempt for the ordinary decencies of family life that reminds one of the worst excesses of the French Revolution. But I presume you know what that unfortunate movement led to. I would strongly advise you, Mr. Worthing, to try and acquire some relations as soon as possible and to make a definite effort to produce, at any rate, one parent of either sex before the season is quite over. No, I thought it was last Wednesday. Joseph! Sylvia, how are you? Fine, fine. It's been a long time. Are you here for the play? Tracking down your husband. Oh, he's got... something wrong. You're missing the second act. Joseph, good heavens. Oh, it's been... Uh, a long time. <laughs> Extraordinary. Do you hear for the play? I didn't see you earlier. Yeah. Oh, Presley, it's something else, something urgent. We're here with the Jamisons, just back from Paris. They've taken a flat on the Ile Saint-Louis. Oh, not certain I'd like to live on an island. He what? He wrote a letter about it, detailing everything. Names, places, years, times. Perry died, the letter's fallen to the press. Byrne has it, and he'll probably go with it on Monday. The minister sends his apologies. Now you will write, won't you? Jeffrey and I are travelling next year. And we'd love to know we had something wrong, but we decide what to is it? What? 1958. The press have got hold of it. It was a letter the minister wrote to Roger Perry. Talks about the whole thing. Perry died last month. His family have sent it to the press. It says everything. They'll probably run with it on Monday. Print it. Yes. Was anything being done? Everything possible. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Worthing, can't 
keep pretending I can't. We can't just close our eyes and hope it'll go away. It won't. I feel like a fool because I never knew. Didn't you trust me, Sylvia? Francis, please. This isn't the time. Isn't it? Well, when is the time? Tomorrow morning when it's there, front page, is that the time? If I hadn't come this weekend, would you have just let me read about it? Cut it out! Francis, come on. I have trusted you always. With everything. About Jim and everything. And nothing's been shared. Do you know what that feels like, to be shut out? Shut out and not trusted? I'm not needed here, I'm not. Not trusted, not needed. Francis. Simon, don't say anything. How can I have been a friend? How? I've been more of a fool than a friend. I think I should leave now. Francis, please. No. When people ask, weren't you a friend of the Swifts, I'll have to say no. It's better that I go now. Better. I think I'll... Sylvia, you know Francis, a few hours she'll call and apologize. Perhaps not this time. Dad, I've decided what I have to do. 